Hi, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Cohen, and I'm going to be your instructor this summer semester for COM 654 Social Marketing. That is my rooster, aka research assistant. Um, the noise that you are hearing that sounds kind of inappropriate is actually just my pug. That's just what they sound like when they're breathing. That's Spike. There's another, there's another pug there. And there there's a uh, roosters there. And not roosters, but chickens. And that's Jolene. She's my livestock guardian dog. Um, I do uh, like to work out here on my porch. Um, as you can see, I have lots of company and this is where you will find me most often. Uh, so the first thing I wanna begin with in my introduction is just to let you know that even though we're in this uh, asynchronous online course, I'm actually really easy to reach. Um, I have this computer with me most of the time. I mean, I prefer not to be doing like emails and things like that after I eat dinner, but um, wouldn't put it past me. Um, I actually don't have email on my phone because uh, I do try to have like somewhat of a work-life balance. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, if you ever want to reach out to me, email really is the best way to uh, contact me. And then we could always set up an appointment uh, to talk in some other format. We could do Zoom uh, if you want to do it face to face. Personally, I prefer telephone. I really um, think there's a lost art of communicating on the phone since the pandemic happened. I don't know why we always have to, you know, put on eyeliner and go see each other's faces. Um, but I don't mean to minimize it. If, if you ever want to like talk um, and hash some things out, which um, in some cases I may even recommend, um, I actually, um, I would say compared to all the other online classes I teach, I get to know students better in this class because um, it is really helpful to have sort of some one-on-one -on -one conversations about some of the content in this course. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Uh, please, uh, if you'd like to have a conversation and you don't mind roosters crowing in the background, or even if you do, uh, please reach out. Um, that's the best way to get in touch with me. Um, so now let's talk about the content of this course. What is social marketing or what is social marketing not? Uh, this is a really important point. I find that a lot of people who register for the class see the word social and marketing and in their head they're thinking social media marketing. In fact, when um, this class was first being pitched to go in the graduate catalog, uh, it's been a couple of years, but I think somebody over in the business school or whatever was like, no, 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 you can't teach this class because we already have a social media marketing class. And I'm like, it's not social media marketing. Um, social marketing is actually something that predates social media. If you define social media as um, uh, social network sites and things like that, that is. Social marketing is applying the principles that we are used to applying in traditional marketing contexts. Like if I wanna um, sell an iPhone, right? I would, I would pull from research and practice and marketing to understand how to sell you an iPhone. Right, because I, I, you know, there's a whole um, field just developed to explain how we sell products, how we get people to want to buy things. Social marketing is the idea that, in the same way that we can get people to buy products, we could get people to buy behaviors. Maybe instead of persuading people to, you know, pick up that stick of gum at the grocery store or um, purchase that car or whatever it is, we could take the same principles that understand that help us understand how to do that and apply it to um, persuade people to uh, change their attitudes and behaviors in a way that will improve their um, health or improve the environment. Um, it's, it's about nonprofit causes t typically, and I'll get back to that perhaps in a second. If not, you'll hear me rant about it in another video. Um, but it's all about saying like, listen, the things that persuade people to um, subscribe to different brands or to purchase things can be, uh, uh, can be applied to understand how we can get people to engage in behaviors that are better for themselves or better for society uh, at large, hence the social part, right? It's for the social good. And so what you're gonna be doing in this class is each week you're gonna be working on different components of a social marketing campaign. 
usually when I think of social marketing, I think of public health campaigns, to be honest with you. Um, but they don't have to be public health necessarily. Um, it could also be, like I said, like pro-environmental campaigns. Um, a lot of people in this class have done things like work on things like, oh, well, how do we get people to um, adopt more um, dogs and shelters, right? Or how do we get people to, um, well, this is public health. A couple of years ago, I had a student who worked on um, how do we get people to uh, not leave um, containers around their yard uh, with that will collect water in them because ultimately what happens is mosquitoes breed in water and then disease gets transmitted. I mean, there's all sorts of um, different things um, that you can think of. And I always recommend you think about a cause that is something you're passionate about um, because that's always really interesting because in this class, what we'll want you to do is really think about, well, who's your audience for persuading to get involved with that sort of um, issue or um, what's the psychology behind the reason people aren't doing the things that you think they should be doing and things like that. Um, so it's always better if you can, you know, think of a topic that you actually care about to begin with. Uh, let me say this really quickly though, and uh, back to the, what isn't social marketing? Um, social marketing isn't traditional marketing. So, you know, even though the principles apply in both realms, typically, you know, there's some exceptions, you know, social, uh, social marketing isn't trying to convince people to, well, the example I gave, I think, um, on one of your assignments is it's not trying to get people to sign up for a specific gym. You might have a social marketing campaign that wants people to exercise more, but it's very different than if you were, for instance, working on the marketing strategy, the strategic communication strategy for, um, gold's gym or something like that. Right. So, one of the challenges we have at the beginning of the semester tends to be, um, not always, but if you fall into this camp, don't feel bad about it. It's really normal. But um, a lot of times students just kind of, they have a hard time sort of separating the profit from the nonprofit, I guess you could say. So that might be something I want to push you towards. But what I can, t I don't want to use the G word. I don't want to say guarantee, but I can assure you that usually if you have an interest in a particular area, okay, that's a chicken. That's, that's Moira. She's, yeah, they're really, we got this fence so that they would stay in the fence, but they don't always stay in the fence. Um, okay. Well, she wants to come because there's a, there's a canister of dirt there that she's going to want to take a bath in. That's what chickens, that's how chickens clean themselves. Um, sorry for the distraction. Hopefully it was a entertaining distract, distraction. Um, Anyway, so, so, you know, what you need to start doing for this class is thinking about something that is a cause that will benefit sort of society as a whole, even if that cause for society as a whole is, for instance, reducing the incidence of heart disease or, um, you know, making it so that, I don't know, people uh, – eat healthier or, you know, do, doing things for individual level health that will affect like a large um, percentage of people in the population. Um, anyway, more on that later. I just wanted you to understand what the class is. Um, so now with what's the structure of the class? Well, every week, um, not for the first couple of the weeks, I got to be honest with you, the, sem the semester here starts kind of slow. So don't be fooled. The first couple of weeks are what I would call easy, and then things get start to get a little bit more difficult. Um, so the first couple of weeks you have some quizzes, you're just sort of getting oriented to what social marketing is, and then we start doing weekly worksheets. And these worksheets are literally Word documents that ask you to um, go through a bunch of decisions in order to put together a campaign. And it's really important that you go through these decisions um, in the right order and it's going to be hard because you're going to be tempted to say well i'm going to want to do a campaign on getting people to exercise and the way i want them to do this is by um i don't know like walking however many steps a day or whatever but then you're kind of putting the cart before the horse first what you're going to need to do is pick an audience and then you can decide how you want to appeal to that audience in order to exercise you don't need to know that right now. This is all just a very long winded way of me saying, I really, um, you know, I'm going to encourage you to just trust the process and go step by step. 
don't answer questions if you can avoid them before you an like don't answer future questions before you answer the question in front of you the way this class is set up is so that every um every week you're taking one of those steps so that you can go to the next step so every week you'll start turning in a worksheet and basically you're going to write your answers on this word document and up upload it to turn it in it's not because i'm looking for plagiarism it's just an easy way to to uh, receive the articles and then i'm going to give you feedback and you're going to need to read that feedback before you can go on to the next step so for better or worse this class and it is, I will say this, this makes it challenging for me and for you, but it's really also, I think, um, one of the reasons this class is kind of beneficial. You, you really can't, you, everything builds on, one week builds on the other week. So because all of this is cumulative, you know, you've got to take it step by step and it can be frustrating because you can't move forward until you have the last part or whatever. But what I really love about it is that at the end, you can kind of look back and see the logic to everything and you can, you know, sort of take pride in how you've built, built one layer on top of another layer and things like that. So anyway, so yeah, that's it. So basically every week you do some reading or watch, and I do have videos that are just like this for better or worse. Some of them are dated. Um, some of them literally are like ones that I did four years ago for this class. Some of them I've updated because I didn't like them and they didn't explain things well. But once I had a video where I'm like, okay, this explains exactly what I want it to explain. I just kept it like that. So you're going to see my, my hairstyles change, my weight fluctuate. Um, it's kind of sad actually, or happy. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be weird for you, but not for me because I'm not going to rewatch them. <laughs> I know what I said at some point, like generally. Um, some people don't need to watch the lecture. Some people are fine just reading. Um, and some people are fine watching the lectures and not reading at all. Um, the lectures are designed to okay. condense some material for you um, and help narrow down the focus so that you don't have to necessarily read. Uh, just do whatever works for you. I'm not going to check on whether you read or you watched the lecture or whatever. At the end of the day, and hold on, hey, yay! At the end of the day, the important thing is that you're just able to do the worksheets like you're supposed to do them. Um, so anyway, every week is going to kind of be like that, and the whole goal of this is that at the end of the semester, you are going to submit a final project. But if you play your cards right. The final project shouldn't be that much more work. What I want is a final project that just puts everything that you've been working on together. So certainly you'll have to work on massaging, you know, um, you're going to have all these worksheets and they're going to have all these little parts to them and you're going to have to kind of put them together and make it sound okay. But if, like I said, you've done everything correctly, you shouldn't have a lot of extra things to do. Um, at the end of the semester, I also want you to give a little video show and tell which really, I used to call it a pitch, and it may still be described that way in some of the things I've written. It's not a pitch. It's, it's a show and tell. It's just a way for you to share what you've been doing with your classmates and for your classmates to be able to see it. Because in these online classes, we're just all so separate that I just really wanted something where you can like come and be like, oh, okay, uh, that's another way to apply this type of stuff, different from what I did. And, you know, for, for you also to be able to show off what you've done. So show and tell. Um, and it will be just like this. I, I just need you to talk into a camera, like payback, you know, for all the times I've talked into a camera. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't have much else to say about this class. Oh, well, I guess I, I should mention, I mean, it's probably implied since I said you have to read a book, but there is a book you need to buy for this class. It's hot pink. Um, oh, I could go in and get it, but there's a picture on your syllabus. You'll see what it looks like. Um, that's the most recent edition. Sometimes people are like, can I get an older edition? And the answer is yes, but you're going to be responsible for figuring out how the chapters align and stuff like that. I, you know, the, the basic principles of social marketing have been around since the seventies. So that hasn't really changed. And the authors of your book are like the gurus of so social marketing. And they've done several editions of this book. Um, but they do each new edition. They, they provide rel more relevant examples and everything. So I think, um, it's helpful, but like I said, if you want to save some money, I know that also you can rent this book. Um, so that's another way you can save some money. 
Um, but yeah, I, I like, you know, some of this stuff is not really going to make sense until you start doing it. And like I said, it's kind of like a, it starts off slow and then we're going to jump up and then we're going to really start getting into it. And it like, you know, you might not be able to see the forest through the trees immediately, but, but eventually you will. And um, it's always pretty gratifying and rewarding. So for now, all I need you to do is start thinking about like a social marketing topic that you would want to focus on for most of the semester. Um, post some ideas in the discussion board this week and take a syllabus quiz that's there so that um, some of the stuff that I've said here, but also some maybe details like deadlines and things like that that are in your syllabus. Um, check those out and those will be on the syllabus quiz and um, then I'll know that you, I don't know, at least knew it at one time. <laughs> um, I do want you to take the syllabus quiz uh, as many times as you need to to get all the answers right so then I can rest assured that like, oh, you know everything um, and that's great. And yeah, and then like I said, we'll just start talking about it on the discussion board and I'll get to know you and things you're interested in. And then whatever like feedback I give you initially um, will hopefully help you structure your first worksheet in a couple weeks. So um, that's it. Uh, I say that's it, but that was like 16 long minutes of me talking. So I'm going to shut up now. And if you have any questions, you should know where to find me now. And if you don't, hopefully you will when you look at the syllabus. So, okay. Uh, looking forward to the summer. Um, bye. I mean, hi. <laughs> See you later. Bye.